Hey, hey! Thanks so much for joining me! It's Lisa and we are live from the Camp Kailua Bake Shop. Um, I see, looking at myself, that I didn't lip gloss. You know, this is one of my favorite things in life, so I'm gonna lip gloss quick. Perfect. So, um, y'all, I'm Lisa. I am so glad that you have jumped on, but I want to tell you, please let me know that you're here. Drop a hello in the comments, say hi, tell me where you're from, whatever, something, anything. Let me know that you're watching. Even if it's the replay, you can let me know that as well. So today, uh, I'm excited. We're going to make cherry crisp and this recipe is one that I've made before. However, I had to make a few adjustments today because ingredients sometimes can be tricky to find and also some of them I don't use in my kitchen. So I had to swap a few things out. So we'll talk through those details as we take a look at the ingredients together. What's that button? Hmm. Fun. I, they added like some new buttons down at the bottom for me to uh, mess around with. So there you go. So this um, recipe comes from this cookbook. It's a good one. Yeah, I'm going old school today with the paper. Um, but you can see this cookbook is like super well loved. It's all dog eared. It's a good one. So this recipe is cherry crisp. And if you're have access to this cookbook it's on page 586 so you can join along um so there's that i just also need to preheat the oven how could i forget that it's not my first day to bake let me preheat the oven i'm gonna set it to 350. and i'm gonna go 350 just regular that's fine so i don't need to do um convection oven or anything. A little bubble water. All right. So a couple of other things. I also have already uh, buttered an eight by eight pan cherry crisp. So that's ready to go. This was one of the modifications that I made. The directions say to spray it with a vegetable spray. I think if you've watched me before, you know how I feel about those, not a fan. So I would rather use butter, grab a couple extra calories. It's okay, I'll do a sit up, whatever. I'm gonna use butter on my pan. So there's that. That's the first modification. Some other ingredients that I already have pulled together. I've got three quarters cup oats. I've got like two tablespoons of butter. Again, it's supposed to be margarine, but margarine doesn't live here. Butter does. And then um, flour, third cup. I couldn't remember, third cup of flour. So I've got the oats, the flour, and the butter together. We're gonna combine those shortly. I also have some other ingredients back over here. So let me walk through those. I've got a quarter cup of light brown sugar that's packed. Remember um, in a previous bake show, we talked about packing that brown sugar. So that's uh, something I already did here. Then I've got a quarter cup also of um, regular sugar. That's all of the ingredients for the topping. So we'll put that topping together first. Then we're gonna work on the filling, and the filling is where it got a little bit exciting when I was looking for ingredients, when I was ordering them. Um, because ordinarily, I would use canned cherries. None, none to be found, nowhere. So, um, frozen cherries, I was like, oh, I'll get frozen cherries. No, no you won't. Fresh cherries, no. So. I punted and I got um, cherry pie filling. So we're gonna use two cans of cherry pie filling. One of them, you may see this contraption here, I'm draining and I actually poured some, I put some water in the can and poured that over it 
because when I use the cherry that's in a can, I would ordinarily utilize that juice. So I wanted to sort of simulate that. So we'll kind of talk through some adjustments that I'm going to attempt. We'll see how that goes when we get to that filling part of the bake. Um, I also have all ready to go um, some more sugar. I have a half a cup. I had to look and see. I've got three tablespoons of cornstarch. I've got a little over probably a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and then a little less than a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm not a fan of nutmeg, really. They should be um, even, quarter each. But I, I like nutmeg okay, but I'm not like crazy about it. So I lessened that a little, increased the cinnamon a little. Because I do like cinnamon. Makes sense? It's funny, you can kind of tweak it however you want. So that's also going to go into the filling. And then I also have one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. Oh, it smells so good. Hmm. Lemony. Um, and that's just, I've already got it just measured out. So there's that. The recipe does not call for vanilla, but if you've watched a bake along before, you know, I kind of like vanilla. So I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla into the mix when we get there. So those are all of the ingredients. I'm going to, um, in just a minute, let you kind of take a minute and gather your ingredients, preheat your oven if you need to, get your pan ready if you need to. And also on Fridays here in the Camp Kailua Bake Shop, we have a little tradition you may know about, Fireball Friday. So join me if you want to. I'm going to go grab a shot of Fireball and I'm going to come back here and we'll toast to Fridays and we'll toast to Cherry Crisp and then we'll be on our way to bake. All right, grab your ingredients, grab your Fireball and meet me right back here. Alrighty, so hopefully you had a chance to grab your ingredients. Um, today's Fireball Friday, there's, oh, it's frost. I was like, there's something stuck on my glass because I keep it in the freezer. Um, so today's Fireball Friday glass is from the Austin Beer Fest. Ooh, that was really fun. Uh, we went the first year and um, had, a, had beer, had a lot of beer. So, um, cheers to you. Cheers, Trisha. Thanks for jumping on. Happy Friday and um, yay for Cherry Crisp, right? It's kind of fall-like. Well, not here because I'm in Florida, but somewhere I'm sure it's fall-like. So, it's a great time to start baking those crisps and cobblers and all of those good things, right? So, let's cheers to all of that. Fireball! Fantastic. I'm going to um, dip you down a little bit so that you can see what's happening. I'm going to kind of be using the stove top as my um, counter, I guess. So let me move you over so you can see what's up. Zoom in. All right, so now hopefully you can kind of see things a little bit. I'll tip you down. This is the um, start of our topping. And like I said, we're gonna make this first. So just a reminder, in this bowl, I already have three quarters cup of oats, and those are just uncooked regular oats. I've got a third cup of flour, just regular flour, and then about two tablespoons of Butter. And again, you can totally use margarine if that's your preference. You can use any plant-based butter-like substance if that's what you are uh, doing with your diet. That's totally fine and it should work beautifully. So whatever kind of, uh, you know, butter-like substitute is fine. 
I'm going to cut this with this pastry cutter. So these um, lines, they're not terribly sharp. I mean, I can touch it, but they are sharp enough to sort of blend things together. So it should kind of create a nice blend of the ingredients that I have here in the bowl. You can use these um, pastry cutters if you're making doughs or sometimes biscuits, you might wanna use um, a pastry cutter to kind of blend everything together. Uh, it tends to kind of leave some butter chunks, which is really nice. And um, so we're gonna blend with this first. So I'm just gonna cut and it's super easy to do. You, you just kind of mash it all together, but you're just using this cutter and I kind of rock it back and forth a little bit, but you just use this cutter instead of a spoon. And you can see at first all of the butter kind of jumped up on top, but as it works, it kind of moves itself around. The other thing that using this pastry cutter will do, guys, is kind of break up the oats. Not a lot, because you want those whole oats, but it will kind of start to break them a little, which is gonna be a nice, um, you know, kind of just create a nice topping. If you think about a crisp, it's just a nice little sort of crunchy, oaty, yummy topping. All right, I'm just gonna get some of that butter reincorporated there. It does like to build up on the top. Okay, and I'm just gonna use this to really clear it off. This is just one of those like spatula scraper fabulous things, a spoonula. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna call this done. It's pretty well incorporated. There's still kind of some butter bits. There's, I can still see oats and the flour looks pretty well blended. Oh, oven's ready, love that sound. I'm gonna just drop this in the sink because I don't need this anymore. And then the next bit that I'm going to add is my quarter cup of white sugar, quarter cup of packed brown sugar. You can use the light or the dark. The recipe calls for light, but if you have dark on hand, you can totally use it. It just is referring to the amount of molasses that's in the um, brown sugar, that's all. I'm just gonna dump that in. And then I'm just gonna stir this up. Just stir it in. Super exciting, right? But you can start to see how it kind of starts to come together. And this is not a, a crisp, it's not like a double crust or anything. It's, it's just something that we will sort of sprinkle across the top. Although with a nine by nine pan, it's gonna be pretty well covered. is that guys I'm gonna set this aside we will come back to that in a little bit but right now we're ready to start working on our um, filling so I'm gonna move you over just a little so this is my pan that I'm gonna make the filling in I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm sorry I'm just reading I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to medium high because I want to sort of start warming the pan. And then while that's warming, I'm gonna do a couple of things. First, I'm going to take, do you remember this mixture? Or well, it's not really a mixture yet, but it's um, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the sugar, and the cornstarch. So I just kinda of wanna take my fork. I don't have to blend it completely, but I do wanna blend it a little bit before I put it um, in what will be the filling. And that way it'll 
it'll help once I mix everything together in the pan to uh, incorporate a little bit better, a little bit quicker. Okay. So here's where it's gonna get interesting. <laughs> Um, so I, the recipe, like I said, calls for two cans of cherries and I couldn't find two cans of cherries. Oh, two cans of cherries in water. So I have no idea how much water lives in two cans of cherries. So I'm kind of punting on that piece. So I have been, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to use, um, cherry pie filling. And so I don't know if you can see this very well, but I've been draining a can of cherry pie filling and I put some water in the can and just poured that on top. So it drained to the bottom. So there is some juice there. Um, you just grab a paper plate because I'm gonna need to set this strainer on something. So this is kind of the juice. And like I said, I don't know how much, this is about two cups. So um, I don't know. I don't know how much is in there. So, um, and when I say in there, I mean in, how much is in a can and it costs for two cans. So I feel like I would rather go less and add more if I need it. So I'm just gonna take, this is just a one third measure and I'm just gonna do smaller amounts first. So I don't know, that's that's a cup. I'll go a little bit more. We can always cook it down if we need to. Maybe I should just do the whole thing. I'm just gonna do the whole thing. We're gonna get crazy, watch this. Everybody in the pool. <laughs> Woo! Gets loud sometimes here. All right, so that's gonna heat up for just a little bit. Um, and then we're going to add these other ingredients. So earlier, um, just a moment ago, I blended up the flour, no, the sugar, the cornstarch, the nutmeg, and the cinnamon. So that's what's in this bowl. And I'm going to pour this in to this cherry mixture. And I'm gonna just let the cherry juice kind of warm up just another second. And then I'm just going to start to pour or this uh, blend into the cherry juice. And then we just wanna whisk it. And it's going to take several minutes, guys, because you want it to, um, you see how it looks kind of um, creamy right now? We don't want it to look like that. We want it to be a little bit more clear and a little bit thicker. And I don't know if it will go clear because like I said, I'm using the cherry juice, uh, cherry pie filling stuff instead of the juice. So I'm not really sure how this will work. So if it doesn't go clear, totally okay. Um, I'm okay with that anyway, but it does need to thicken up. Oh, uh-oh. So that was weird, huh? My uh, light decided it was gonna go off. Okay. The fun part about this says I have to whisk it constantly. So, um, whew, <laughs> I'm gonna get a, get a little arm workout today, right? It's gonna make up for that butter that I used instead of margarine. It smells so good. I can smell the cinnamon. Um, oh, I forgot to add lemon juice. Go ahead and add that now. Mm, it smells so good. I can smell like cherries a little bit, the cinnamon. 
The lemon juice, guys, is gonna add just a little bit of punch to it, a little bit of um, tart. Although the cherries might have a little bit of tart to them, although I don't know, because these are pie cherries. Might be a little bit sweeter. We'll see how it goes, right? So do you have, let me ask you this, because it's like a constant wonder for me. My glass stove top, right? I, in my old house, we had gas and that was great, but this is a glass top electric, right? So cleaning it, I found like this spray that I could put on it. Um, I think my light doesn't like the plug that it's plugged into. So hopefully it will keep letting me turn it on for now. Um, it, the glass top, I, I don't know, I found like this spray that I can spray on it and I let it set and then I just wipe it off with a microfiber, but I don't know, do you have a glass top stove? What are your tips for cleaning it? Let me know um, because I would love to know, you know, if I'm missing something. Oh, look how thick that just got all of a sudden. All right, I'm going to, oh, I love it. Woo, super thick. Okay, I'm gonna lower the heat. Actually, I'm just gonna turn it off. And I'm going to drop the whisk into my sink and I'm gonna add just a splash of vanilla. Um, and like I said, if you have any tips for keeping your glass top clean, let me know. I'm, you know, like I said, right now I'm using that spray, which is okay, but I don't know, is that the best thing? I don't know. I'm gonna just move this over. Oh, it smells so good. All right, so can you see how thick that got? Let me move you. I don't want it to be on the heat any longer, but you can see how thick that is right now, right? And now I'm gonna add in the cherries, and I'm gonna grab that other container as well. Oh, it smells so good. You know, another good combination, I feel like, with cherries is almond. Always yummy. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour this in. And also, I couldn't find the exact right size, um, so I have two giant cans um, instead of two not so giant cans, so it's gonna be extra cherry-y. And I'm okay with that. Okay. That looks good. Now I'm just gonna mix this in to that thickened mixture. Look how good that looks. Oh, y'all. Yeah, it's really unhappy right now. I'm gonna check on that plug in just a second. Okay, I'm gonna move now. This is my prepared eight by eight pan. I've buttered it. Like I said earlier, you could use a spray if you want to, you could use margarine. I just don't utilize either one of those. I prefer just butter, um, so that's what I did. And now I'm just going to pour this into this prepared pan. Look how good that looks. Y'all, I'm so excited. It smells so good. All right, let me see, because there's a lot of goodness still in this pan. The great thing about these spoon spatulas, they really work nice. I'm gonna try some other light things, guys. I'm sorry. I don't wanna fry my light fixture here. Okay, 
Okay, so take a look at that. Got some nice cherries in there. You've got that um, thickened liquidy, formerly liquid mixture. Try to get some more of this out. I think it's gonna be really good. Set that aside and then I'm just going to take this is the topping. Now we're ready for sprinkling the topping on. Um, and you can see how that looks. You can see there are some little chunks of butter and that's okay. There's some, you can see big pieces of oats. There's little tiny pieces of oats. And I'm just gonna take my spoon and just sprinkle it over the top. And like I said earlier, because this is an eight by eight pan, it's probably going to have pretty good coverage because it made a lot of topping and that's okay. I'd rather have more than not enough, right? Oh, it smells good. I'm gonna get all the corners, all the middles. <laughs> Hopefully you can still see that okay. I'm sorry, my light's being wonky right now. I'm just gonna go like this, watch this. See a couple of little bald spots so I wanna fill in. Oh, looks good. Right? Yum. Oh, I'm gonna back you up real quick for just a second so I can open my oven and put this crisp in. It's very heavy. Alexa, set a timer for 30 minutes. guys that's it that's cherry crisp super easy comes together really fast you know when it's done you can have it warm you can have it cool it's great with a little bit of vanilla ice cream on top maybe some chocolate drizzle sounds amazing so um oh thanks trisha thanks for that feedback so i'm looking forward to trying this it'll be done in about a half an hour and um, so yeah, if you make this, guys, take a picture, tag me in it. I can't wait to hear how you like it, how you try it, any shifts in the recipe that you make, let me know too. I'm always looking for new ways to mix it up. All right, have a great weekend, you guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for jumping on.